So, Shadow, Shadow the Hedgehog, probably one of the most lovable anti-heroes in the entire Sonic fan base. And quite so, it should be noted that he had a dark past and I could see why most people would take a liking to him. Well, as you can see, we live in 2004 and Shadow is really popular. So why don't we make a game about him? We just gotta give fans a closure on Shadow's story. Yes, let's do something to make the new hip kids play our games, yo! Yay! Sega! Ah yes, Shadow the Hedgehog released on PS2, Xbox, and GameCube in 2005. The game was developed by Sega Studios USA, which look at where they are now. Bruh. The development of this game is pretty interesting. It seems really American influenced rather than Japanese influenced. Sega Studios USA still had Takeshi Izuka and Yuji Naka working on the project. Izuka worked with the writing and directing and Yuji Naka worked as the producer. As many of you can tell, this game had a darker story. The team took some inspirations from films such as Constantine, Underworld and Terminator. The game tried to be more for older audiences, but not too mature to get the game away from children's hands. Also, around this time video game violence was in the news like every week with the likes of Grand Theft Auto and other M-rated games at the time. But honestly, they actually did decently good. I mean, it wasn't too dark, but was dark enough. They gave Shadow a fucking gun, gave vehicles to drive, and had very light profanity. You know, as someone looking in, this could just look like a desperate cry for help, begging you to play and be interested in the game, but it's really not. See, Sonic the Hedgehog was sorta of on its last leg with the Dreamcast games, Sonic Adventure 1 and Adventure 2. Sonic Adventure were the last Sonic games to be on the Sega console, so the development team went all out and spawned a long time mystery into the new age fandom, Shadow and his past. If many of you who haven't played Sonic Adventure 2, spoilers, Shadow is introduced as one of Gerald Robotnik's creation as a hopeful cure to Maria Robotnik's illness, Maria being the granddaughter of Gerald and Shadow being there up in the Ark. They built a strong bond, but a little after the GUN broke into the space arc, so Maria and Shadow tried to escape, but then Maria sacrifices herself to save Shadow, and ensures Shadow to help and save humanity or something like that, I don't, I don't remember. Anyways, that is a little backstory. Now here we are in Shadow the Hedgehog game. Ooh yes, the opening animation, this is literally the best thing ever. I really love it. And it really just shows the tone from the song and the explosions and guns, it's just really crazy. Now we start the game and the prologue scene. Okay, so Shadow has a little amnesia, but still remembers about Maria and his name. And then Westopolis starts being overrun by some aliens. He gets told by Black Doom that he must find the Chaos Emeralds and now game starts. So each level is really well presented by playstyle. The player is given multiple tasks, one for good and one for bad respectively. Fill these up and you'll progress through the maze of levels generated by your outcome. So this game really has 10 endings plus another ending when you complete that ending. I know it sounds really weird. How do I know? I looked it up. This is really something I haven't done myself but according to this reddit user that I'm not going to pronounce the name but they have completed all and I mean all 326 routes in the game. That has to be a lot of wasted time, but as you can see, it is a really smart gameplay mechanic. To get different outcomes each time, you'll always want to play the game again and try to search every nook and cranny, trying to uncover the full mystery. I really wish Sega would have expanded more on this with future titles. I guess you could say the older Sonic games did it prior, like in the 2D games, if you get all emeralds, you'll get a completely different ending, but Shadow does it differently. With you, direct actions have a single concept your route in the game is dependent on your action. Go dark and you'll get more likely harder levels, but go hero and you'll get rewarded or just go yourself and don't do either and remain neutral. But towards the end, some of those actions don't really matter. Remember, this was a Sega USA developed game. Us Americans don't need a good story. We just need loud noises and big guns that go boom boom. With another note, the game controls and feels like a modified version of Sonic Heroes. Maybe it was running on the same engine, most definitely, and sometimes the aiming and shooting is clunky, but play it like a normal platformer and you'll be fine. I also think this game with guns glorified really drove the meme and cringy edgy Sonic OCs back in the mid 2000s. Ah, what a world. I mean, gosh, this game is garbage. <laughs> Actually, the game is a lot better than Sonic 2006. I really believe if Sonic 06 used the same gameplay style and technique while using the hub worlds, it probably would have been better. Anyways, I believe that concludes this video. Shadow was a good game. Not the best ever. It is a spinoff for a reason. It should be left that way, but it really had a well thought out ideas. 
none like we had ever seen in previous Sonic games, so I'd really like to applaud them on that. Also, if you guys want to check me out on Patreon, it'd really be helpful. I got some two tiers there. Also, you can try subscribing to this YouTube channel, you know, because it's free. And also, I am having a new Discord that I'm going to be trying out. So if you guys want to join there, you know, you we can do conversations or whatever. And that should be all. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you.